All right, so we're moving along pretty well. Now the next thing we want to do is do something with those links. And the something that we want to do is ultimately follow them and then extract more data about the apps on the upcoming pages. So first, let's go ahead and restructure this a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to, in the crawl itself here, in the crawl function, I want to get the app that's being returned here just so I can kind of keep some semblance of structure here. So I want to return an app from this particular function that's being called by crawl. So I'm going to get that. And then from here, that's where I'll go ahead and I'll add that self.apps.append and I'll append that app. All right, so what we want to do now is the important thing to remember about crawling is that you want to maintain all the links that you're going to use. And in, there's many different ways to structure this. There's many different ways to do it. And I'm going to show you a few examples of libraries that handle all of this stuff for you. But if you ever wanted to roll your own to kind of see how that's going to work, you can kind of follow a similar structure if you want, or you can kind of go off and do your own thing. I'm just trying to get you started. So what we want to do is we have this concept of a depth. Now that's the farthest we want to go down this traversal of the different links. So we're also going to want to then keep track of our current depth of where exactly we're at. And we're going to start off at zero. So remember what I said when we pass in that starting URL and we call crawl, then we're starting at depth zero. So if I pass in zero to my function down here, I'm only going to do this one iteration of crawl and then I'm done. Now, another thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to keep track of all the links that I find at the different depths. So I'm going to create another property here that's going to be called depth links. And this is going to be another list. So this is where I'm going to save in here and at each index within this list, I'm going to store the links that I find at that depth. So at depth zero, I'm going to store the links for the first starting URL that I have. At depth one, I'm going to store all the links that I found on all the next, on all the links that I found at depth one. So when I returned, so when I go to those next apps, those next pages, I want to save, in this particular instance, I believe there were three apps listed on the first starting URL page. I want to follow all of those and I want to get all the links on those subsequent pages and combine them into a single list at depth link index one. So as you see how that's kind of going to flow. So now what we want to do is once we come into crawl, we want to get the app that's found at that starting URL. We want to save that particular app. And then we want to save the links that we find from that particular app. So we'll say self dot depth links. And we want to append to this and we want to append to it app dot links. So that's going to put the links, that list of links, into depth links. And the append is simply going to add something to an empty list, which will make it be at index zero. So at index zero now, we're going to have the app links found at depth zero. So what we want to do now is we want to do a little while loop, and we want to check to see as long as self.current depth is less than self.depth, then we want to go ahead and continue to go down that path. We want to go ahead and continue to crawl the links that we find at that particular depth. So let's go ahead and create a variable here. So we're going to keep track of all the current links that we find as we go through these pages. Then we want to go through the links at the appropriate depth of our current depth to find the ones, to find the next set of apps that we want to go ahead and parse. So we'll say for link in self dot depth links. So we'll say depth links. And I want to find all of them that are at our current depth, current depth, just like that. So now I'm going to iterate through all of those. And of course, we'll start by grabbing an app. So that's going to be equal to self dot get app from link. And we're going to pass into it the link that we're working with. And that's going to give us back an app. And actually, just to kind of keep things um, a little bit more clear, I'm going to call this current app so we don't get confused with any other app that we're throwing around here. And then I'm going to go into my current links. And instead of appending at this point, because what I'm getting back is actually a list. And if I start to add, if I start to append these in, I'm going to start getting lists of lists. And that's going to confuse things as we go. So I'm going to make sure 
that at this point I am actually going to use extend. So it's just going to add the links that I found at in the current app. So it's going to just extend my current links and it's going to it'll allow me to pass in a list and just have it instead of adding a list at an index, it's going to just add those pieces of data in that list as pieces of data in my current links list. All right, and so then once I have done that, I can come down and I can then add this new app to my list of apps. So we'll say self.apps append, I want to append a new app like that. We'll go ahead and save that. And that's going to end this for loop here. So once I finish that, I'm gonna pop back out into my while. And at this point, I want to increment my current depth. So I'll say I've finished at that depth. So I'll say current depth plus equal to one. And then I'm also going to go into my depth lengths and I'm going to append now all the information I found at current lengths. We'll go ahead and save that. So now you've gotten to the point where you have started to extract all the data from the subsequent links based on what we have done so far. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's clear what we have here and let's go ahead and run this. Now, what we would expect to happen is only to get the first one because our depth that we've passed in is still zero. So we're still getting just that first one. So let's see what would happen now if I come down here and say, all right, I wanna go one layer deep. So let's go ahead and save that. We'll run it again. Now this should take a little bit longer because it has to keep going. But I see now that we have a little bit of an issue. So it seems that we keep hitting either the same link or we are continuing to write the same data into our app. So let's go ahead and see what we've done wrong here. Aha, and I actually see what the problem is, and I started to allude to it earlier, but I seem to have typed something incorrectly where I'm continually adding the same app into our collection. So what I don't wanna do that, I actually want to use current app like that, I wanna save that. So once I have retrieved my current app from a link, then I'm going to extend the current links with the app links that I find, and then I wanna add the current app that I'm iterating through into my collection. So let's save that. So let's go ahead and see if that takes care of our issue. So as I mentioned before, this could take a few, a few extra seconds, but as you can see here now, we've retrieved four. We retrieved at layer zero, then we've also retrieved those th information about the three apps that are found on that page as being something else we might be interested in. So I could don't have to stop here. I could obviously keep going. I could add two here and save that and we'll see what happens at this point. Actually, we'll clear this out first and we'll run this one more time just to see what happens. Now I have to warn you as we begin to do this, uh, many sophisticated websites out there are going to start to notice if you begin to start to execute a bunch of get requests or any sort of HTTP requests against their web servers. And if you start to do them too quickly, uh, you can very quickly have your IP address blacklisted on their servers so that it actually will block your requests from coming in and sending back error responses and things like that. So you don't want to do that. So typically what happens when people start writing apps like this is to actually kind of guard against that and put in a little bit of a, of a wait or a, a sleep timer to kind of space things out a little bit just so it doesn't go to that point where you actually get blacklisted. So we could do that quite easily. There's another library we could import called time. We'll say that. And then once, we'll, once we do that, we'll come down in here, maybe at the end of this for loop, while we're doing this, we'll go ahead and say time.sleep and you pass in the number of seconds you wanna wait. So I'll just put in five seconds and we'll say that. So now you'll see that this is gonna take a little bit longer because after we get the new app from that particular link, we're gonna sleep here for five seconds and then we're gonna go back through again. So let's go ahead and clear this out and then we'll run this one more time. And ultimately what you're seeing now is that we are able to ex not only scrape data from these URLs that we've been running, so you've seen now how to use simple XPath queries to scrape pieces of information off of websites that you go to. And then we've also learned a little bit about being able to crawl the web. So we've started at a particular URL, we then go ahead and get the data off of that URL that we want, and then we take a look at the links that we find on there, and once we find those links, we determine how deep we wanna go, 
And then we go on to the next page, the subsequent first child page, and we extract the app information as well as the links off of that one. And then we go to the next child and the next one until we've exhausted all the children at that layer. And then we save all of those links. And then we can say, all right, do we want to go another layer deeper? So ultimately, you could continue going down this path for quite some time until you actually get everything you're looking for. And once this program execution actually finishes here, you'll see that we're once again going to get the same output. And now our results have finally come back and you can start to poke through here and see maybe there are some interesting apps out here that maybe I want to go try out or maybe I want to take a look at. And one thing to actually note here, and you can build all sorts of functionality and logic into this, but the deeper you go down this depth path, you're going to see we came full circle and now we've listed Candy Crush Saga was something recommended to you if you viewed one of these other apps in here. And that's actually where we started from. So if you wanted to maybe build in some logic to say, you know, if I get some duplicates, skip those, don't worry about those, something like that. But I'll definitely leave that as an option or as an upgrade for you to work on on this particular script. So as you can see here, with just a few lines of code, using a few libraries, some built in and some you might have to download and include yourself, we've built a fairly nice little application that's not really a generic purpose scraper or crawler, but it's definitely something for use in what I'm interested in doing. And so hopefully you can take this information and just adapt it a little bit to work how you want it to work and go out and pull out some data that you are looking to do. Now, in the next lesson, I'm going to introduce to you a couple different libraries that you can use that can ma even make this much simpler for you, not only in the scraping world, but also in the crawling world, just to show you that you have some options.